Uh, next speaker is Mr. Brian O'Donnell from uh, Ireland. He's a senator in Ireland. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay, th thank you. Uh, and uh, I'm honoured to be here this evening uh, with uh, so many um, distinguished members here in the panel to shed some light and to support the global efforts uh, to um, uh, look at the atrocities that have taken place in Iran and that continue, unfortunately, to take place uh, there today. I suppose at the outset I just want to congratulate uh, the Iranian resistance uh, and the people of Iran for the great achievement of successful relocation of the Camp Liberty residents to safety in Albania. <clears throat> This certainly represents great news, uh, and it provides an indication to all of us around the world that combined efforts can achieve a solid outcome. Uh, the relocation achievement should energize all of us uh, going forward as parliamentarians and dignitaries uh, from around the world uh, who call for the safety and security of members of the main Iranian opposition, the PMOI, uh, our efforts matter, uh, and uh, we should now use that renewed focus to energize and strengthen our continued ongoing efforts. I suppose from a political perspective, uh, this outcome uh, in relation to the relocation uh, was a major blow to the Iranian regime, and it certainly neutralized uh, its immediate plots to uh, obliterate uh, the defenseless uh, PMOI members in Iraq. It's important to state uh, that if we examine and consider developments uh, in their totality since 2009, uh, when an Iran-backed uh, Iraqi government was handed the responsibility for Camp Ashraf and subsequently Camp uh, Liberty, the uh, theocratic leaders in Tehran used extensive diplomatic, economic, uh, political, uh, and military resources, as well as a demonstrated campaign to achieve their goals uh, in killing all PMOI members. This harsh reality brings us to the main topic of today's conference, which is about the massacre which occurred 38 years ago, uh, back in 1988. Uh, during the summer of that year, as we have heard, uh, tens of thousands of uh, Iranian political prisoners uh, that were, some of them being held in jails across Iran, were systematically uh, executed. The evidence which has been uh, brought to light recently, but uh, most of the evidence has been there for some time, uh, illustrates that the wave of executions uh, which began in uh, July 1988 after uh, a fatwa by the Supreme Leader at the time, uh, ordering the executions of anyone uh, who had not repented and was not willing to totally collaborate with the regime at the time. Following that, the fatwa, which is exposed to the public by the Iranian resistance, uh, death commissions were formed in more than 70 towns and cities around the country at the time. By the time the execution stopped uh, in the late autumn of 1988, uh, as has been referred to, uh, in excess of 30,000 political prisoners, uh, the overwhelming majority of them, activists of the PMOI, were slaughtered inhumanely. In a new, uh, the, the audio tape was referred to, and if I can just take one excerpt from the audio tape, um, uh, which was... Um, uh, um, uh, acknowledging the, uh, the, the, the linkage between what was happening at the time and the military intelligence. Uh, and uh, Eotala Montazari uh, acknowledged uh, and stated on these audio tapes that the Ministry of Intelligent, uh, Intelligence wanted to do the massacre and had made investments, these investments obviously to support the massacre. Uh, and it goes on to say that uh, the uh, audio tape Montessari also reveals that the senior cleric emphasized prior to the massacre that the PMOI must must be executed, must be executed. Uh, this clearly demonstrates the hatred of uh, Iran's theocratic leaders towards the Iranian uh, opposition, or perhaps should I say their fear of democratic accountability, democracy and human rights for the Iranian people. The more recent callous and deadly attacks against the PMOI members in Liberty and Ashraf were indeed a combination uh, of, or a continuation of the massacre which took place 28 years previously. 
representing three decades uh, of a purge uh, to crush any and every uh, viable political opposition in order to hold on to power at all costs. Alarmingly, these uh, executions in Iran, coupled with the uh, intensi intensified crackdown on activists, uh, persecution of religious and ethnic minorities, and uh, the arrests of dual nationals on bogus charges, clearly uh, um, highlights the theocratic rulers have no intention of abandoning uh, repression, uh, and they're determined to crush any popular, popular dissent uh, to hold on to power at all costs. I know the time is against us, but I want to use this platform to uh, reiterate calls which have been made uh, and uh, to call on, we're here in the historic Geneva building here, the heart of the, uh, the United Nations uh, um, or the UN Human Rights Council, uh, which is an intergovernmental body within the United Nations <coughs> system, uh, responsible for the promotion and protection of all human rights around the world. Therefore, uh, we need to uh, take the opportunity to call on the international community, especially Western governments and indeed the Western media uh, and the United Nations Commissioner for Human Rights to condemn outright uh, and to recognize that the 1988 massacre of uh, over 30,000 political prisoners in Iran was indeed a crime against humanity. Uh, and secondly, uh, steps need to be taken uh, at, uh, in the Security Council and uh, within the United Nations Human Rights Council uh, to bring those responsible for these crimes to justice in an international tribunal. These are legitimate demands uh, and can be easily implemented, but political courage is required. Uh, uh, we uh, had the event in Paris this year where the Iranian resistance organized to have many hundreds of parliamentarians and dignitaries from all over the world attend together with an excess of 100,000 people. Uh, we have uh, uh, and need to re-energize our efforts in light of the recent uh, uh, report. Uh, and as an international community and as international parliamentarians, we have an obligation to play a role in that. That's why I'm here this evening, to support uh, uh, the values of democracy, freedom, respect for others that we enjoy in many uh, liberated countries right across the world have to be enjoyed in Iran as well. Uh, we have, the world is now a very small place, uh, and as parliamentarians from any nation on the, on the planet, uh, we need to raise these concerns, and I look forward to working uh, uh, with colleagues to do that, uh, and uh, I want to again thank uh, the uh, chairperson and the organizing committee for having this very important event today. It may be a heavy subject, uh, but it's an important one. And those who died, they were brothers and sisters. They were husbands and wives. They were children of uh, fathers and mothers. They deserve their memory to be restored by having justice uh, brought to bear. Thank you.